Hey guys, so Shawan Monger here, and you're watching 3 vs. 3 Kingdom of Heaven. This is an attackers vs. defender scenario. And we're gonna start here in Capture Age. Uh, just to show you the map, this is what the map looks like. And the reason I'm starting here is because I want to have the rest of the game in the game. But I do want to uh, show the key points from a larger perspective. So anyway, the attackers uh, spawn here on the southeast. Um, and the main objective of the attackers is to bring Defender Morale down. And I can show you the exact uh, like values later on. Right now, I want to show you the attack points. So with the uh, attackers spawning in the southeast, they're probably going to want to capture these two main points. So this is the Al-Aqsa Mosque. You can see any attack uh, capture point is uh, marked by flags. And so this is the Al-Aqsa Mosque capture zone and this is the Dome of the Rock capture zone. So those are the two most important capture zones, capture points. Uh, obviously the attackers can capture other things like gates and towers, you know. Uh, but the most important points are, well, for the southeast mainly, is the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, what happens is, if you capture either of these points, that will be 15% morale damage uh, each to the defenders. So both sides each start with 100% um, morale. And if they capture uh, one of these, that's minus 15%, and then another minus 15% if they capture these. On top of that, there's a morale damage of one every few seconds. So that's why uh, they'll probably want to capture that. There's another uh, important couple of points. There's this one, Church of the Holy Sepulchre here, uh, hanging by its own. That's another minus 15% morale with 1% morale damage every few seconds, but this is a little farther out. It is vulnerable if they don't protect it, because there's no walls surrounding it. Another point that they can try to capture is the uh, Syrian Exchange. Now, this is just 10% morale damage without any uh, morale bleed. It is significant because it's one of three um, uh, resource points for the defenders. So there's three res resource points. The Tower of David, this, this one. The Syrian Exchange, this one. And the Al-Aqsa Mosque, this one. So that's how the defenders get their food and gold income. So losing any of them will uh, lower that income. So uh, that's what the attackers uh, will try to do, maybe. Who knows? This is a more uh, difficult point to attack unless you separate yourself on purpose and establish a camp here as an attacker. But this is a difficult point because it's surrounded by walls. And there's a lot of, like, nearly indestructible buildings. It's kind of a hard point to capture, but in this version I've seen it captured a few times. Anyway, uh, now we can go into the game itself. So, let's introduce the players. Um, so, in player one blue, that's me, such a warmonger. I've established my base here on the southeast. Uh, I'm playing as the Romans, so we are the Eastern Roman faction. So in player 2, Cyan, you also got uh, a Roman player, Dominic. And IX, deciding he went the long way, he decided he wanted to make a counterpoint. This is a dangerous maneuver. He established his camp here. Very dangerous maneuver because you isolate yourself. He is also closer to this point but if you take a look at what the defenders can see so they did notice this and they did notice something constructing here so they are uh, at least mildly aware that ix assassin is uh building out his forces there and oblix is already sending out medium cavalry to take out and harass any any woodcutters or stone miners, so they're taking out this mule cart. But yeah, Ajax Assassin, he's the only Byzantine player of the group of Eastern Roman attackers. 
And they do have different units, different buildings. Okay. So over on the defender side, I've already uh, talked about Oblix. He's playing as the Britons. He's a player for Grey. And player 5, you've got Emo Weber, also playing as the Britons. He's orange. And player 6, we got No, playing as the Tudans. He's uh, playing as player red. Okay, so... We've got No already scouting. Doing a good scout, finding our uh, location. Taking a look at what we're making. This is important to scout out where the enemies are. So they've scouted the main point of attack over here on the southeast. He knows that at least two players are hanging out here. And some maybe some woodcutters from IX. Assassin. Uh, Oblix is setting up um, medium cavalry to try to block any secret bases from passing by here. Unfortunately, he was not able to block IX Assassin to build his base up here. So his base is starting to get bigger. It's a, it's a nice setup. I like the fact that he's setting up the stone mine um, here. That's good. Anyway, over here on the top right, you see the time of day. And you see the mood is changing from day or late afternoon to nighttime. That's because it's 8 o'clock. And it's about to be 9 o'clock. And at 9 o'clock, you cannot see your allies. So if you take a look, suddenly night has fallen and... When it's nighttime, you can't see your allies. And also, vision is significantly reduced. So, like this scout used to have 20 vision, and now he only has very little. Same thing with all every player in the whole game. So, you got these medium knights, used to have better vision, and now it's, it's very poor. Just trying to keep tabs on anything going around. But just remember it's nighttime. So one minute in uh, real life corresponds to one hour in the game. And I use the term real life because in the game you can see that seconds pass by much faster than in real life. So this is more accurate to real life playing at uh, the speed you're supposed to play the scenario in. Oblix just lost the scout. He finally uh, understood that um, IX Assassin's base is here. So this is what he saw. He's very curious probably what's going on. So IX Assassin's move is dangerous. And what I want to tell any defender that notices that one player is isolated or like all players are isolated is... Something I talked about in my uh, thoughts on defense video. IX Assassin is very vulnerable to being um, attacked by the defenders because he is all alone. So Dominic and I can mutually support each other because our bases are right beside each other. Um, and even if a base was here or built over here, um, we can still support each other. We still have a, a relatively close distance to support each other. But IX put himself way out to the left. And so what the defenders can do about this is build from this uh, Tower of David location. So this area is called the Tower of David. Maybe rally some units over here. Maybe inc even include some horse archers training from the Syrian exchanges. What's going on? Why are they paying that? Uh, and then build up a force here, a very large force, and then once the force is built up, set the rallies over here so you have continuous reinforcements. You can even build from these dungeon postern of St. Ladre. Um, then just just kill this base. I mean, there's nothing much that IX can do unless he's got very good micro assassin. So anybody who isolates themselves like this. Uh, if you attack them, you do one of two two things. You can outright destroy them. Or, you can force them to uh, spend too much food 
on um, on defending themselves. So like, let's say Ajax has 2,000 food. You can at least ensure that you, with like foot archers or, or horse archers, kill the command tent, kill the elite tent, kill the supply depot, and kill some of these trebuchets. Because if you do, the supply depot will respawn in the original spot, which is all the way over here. Right, so if you end up killing all his villagers, after killing the supply depot, there won't be any villagers to build even more stuff over here, or siege equipment. So that would be my thought. Now, this is only a good idea if uh, the player over here cannot defend himself very well. But if he's really good at defending, and let's say he was a Roman player and, and built a lot of watchtowers, Interesting in the up. Uh, Oblix sent a, um, a knight here to raid, but all alone, so that's unfortunate. Anyway, if if the player over here is like a Roman player and has watchtowers and walls and it's just very hard to attack, then um, there's actually not... If you let him establish himself, there's not a lot you can do about it. So, for example, like IX Assassin has already established a massive base. So he can already make a massive amount of... Um, Levy troops if he's under attack. So it's it's important to attack early to just snuff the space out before it gets established. Now we can uh, fast forward a little. Because it is night time and not much is happening. Um, and those are my thoughts on isolating yourself. It could pay off if you're not attacked. And if you are, then, uh, then it starts being a problem. And so here is the... Oh. So, Oblix was thinking about uh, garrisoning Tankard's Tower. Unfortunately... Oh, actually, he just... What he did was he murdered a uh, merchant spy. So something to note is that every attacker can uh, m make a merchant spy out of the, their markets. And they cannot be killed by me melee units. They can only be... They're not targetable, basically. They can only be killed by attack ground range units. And so that's that's how that's how that happened. So anyway, Obelix should now start worrying about this. Is his sector technically because he has control of uh, so this player for Gray has control of Tankard's Tower and has control of this uh, poster. So he needs to actually repair this. Now you might wonder uh, how do you repair it if, let's say, the archers come over here and start killing your villagers? You can actually pop them out to the other side, to the right side, and then protect them with infantry over here. And then the villagers can be on the right side, outside of the walls, repairing your any. But anyway, Oblix is not repairing it. It doesn't appear that he's trying to. He's got the... I guess he's got, like, three villagers over here. But he's... Is he sending them to repair time for Sour? Yes, yes he is, finally. So, uh, it's 4 a.m., so if you can see, Oblix can't see his allies, but now the sun is rising, and now he can see everything. At least, he can see all his allies. Okay. So, Emo Weber, uh, he should understand that IX Assassin, oh wow, what happened here? It appears that there was a, an attempt I'm not sure if it was an attempt by um, infantry or cavalry. Might have been infantry. An attempt to kill a trebuchet, but somehow it failed. And that seemed like there were a lot of dead bodies there. So here's what I'm talking about. Like, IX Assassin is starting to like aim and maybe try to kill these villagers over here. So Oblix has his um, general up here. Scouting. I do not actually advise this. I don't know if Beefcake made this popular. I mean, it's okay to scout with at nighttime, but here's the danger. The general is not as fast as Light Cavalry, so these Light Cavalry just flat out just killed it. So now, for defenders, the generals are irreplaceable. Uh, and that's a problem. So the reason you would want to keep a general is if a general is near Swordsman or like, um, 
militia, like these guys, urban militia, they make them attack faster. What they should be doing right now is popping units outside of this uh, Tancred's Tower to kill this ram and protect it. But they're not really doing that. So Obelix has a bunch of stuff here, and he's just content with uh, with repairing this. That's not going to work out. That's one mistake from the defenders. Uh, crossbowmen, not the best units at trading with uh, other ranged units. They're more useful for um, killing heavily armored units because they do have armor-piercing bolts. Now, Oblix is sending even more knights. Each knight is very expensive in food and gold. So, uh, this is kind of a waste of your most powerful, most expensive, longest to train units. That's unfortunate for Oblix. But over here on the east side, you've got myself starting to work on... Oh. Uh, taking the low walls down. On the west, they're not doing anything. I mean, they're even killing the villagers. They're not doing anything well to protect Tanger's Tower. You do want to make this last as long as possible. 30, 27 minutes left in the game is way too early to be losing a structure like this. You should be fighting tooth and nail. You should be set, popping men out on the other side. And I, I can show this in the other videos coming up. Because I have a few replays that I want to show. And it's only now that they're sending cavalry to, to try to deal with these rams. So it's too little too late. This is kind of going to be a chaotic uh, game to cast. Because we got like action happening on the west. What is happening here? So we got a big, big, big sally coming from Emo Weber. To try to uh, take an engagement. This is uh, might be a good engagement for Emo Weber. Yeah, Ix Assassin's gonna have to pull out now. Emo Weber, his knights are getting killed by um, by Spearman. That's a bad thing. Uh, Ix is gonna win this handily, and on top of that, he's got his own general right in the thick of it, helping his um, his axemen. To attack faster. So these Axemen, because the general is present, are going to have a faster attack speed by a little. So he's doing the right job. He's doing a good job. See, he destroyed Emo Weber's uh, forces. What Ix Assassin should be doing is um, opening up even more low walls so that the, the movement of his forces is uh, it's easier. But now they completely lost this point. That's very unfortunate. Obelix pulled his men even further back. I think he's afraid of all of the range units that Ix Assassin has. Now, Ix Assassin doesn't even have his units on spread formation because he has no fear at all of being um, countered by range units. This is where uh, Port Archers would uh, do well. So yeah, they just let Ix Assassin just take the Tankard's Tower. Now they did destroy this one tower, so there's one tower left. So it's not much of a capture, but it is something. And so now the Ix Assassin has so many archers. How many does he have? That's a lot. Seems like around 80. Anyway, here I come. I just figured I have... I'm close to being at max food. And I don't want to waste food. <laughs> so, I have to make an attack or else I'm wasting an opportunity to do some damage. So I just send some men over to just keep no a little un uncomfortable. Because I do want to use up uh, my food. Um... It's really a waste if you don't attack. Because once you're at max food and you're not doing anything. For example, No. No is not losing any units. But he's not making units. He's at max food already. As a defender. So he's not really uh, he's not really utilizing his army well. Like he should actually be starting to send to make like levy units to do something. It's that or convert food to gold. To be honest. 
But anyway, look at all of these arch crossbowmen getting slaughtered because they're not in staggered formation. And they're just... So uh, the Western Front is already lo just losing very badly to one player, IX Assassin. So, upon reflection, it was really... They really had to, like, take IX Assassin out, Assassin out early. Because he does, he is pretty good at micro, it, it appears. He knows what how to use his units, and what units counter what. And so they needed to kill him early. But now now he's just being too efficient with his kill death ratio. We took a take a look at it. He's already at 382 to 151. So that's that's very good. And you've got uh, Dominic coming in from the north with his own siege towers. Capturing the Passer of the Magdalene. Capturing this northeast tower. Actually, he's not doing it yet. But it's pure pure Spearman. And this is a pure Spearman versus Spearman battle. There's a few Swordsmen mixed in. Swordsmen are better in um, more open battles against Spearman. Uh, but in close quarters, the Spearman are better than Swordsmen. So... I think that the defenders will take this out. Noah has finally used up his food. Um, I'm still like harassing a little bit over here, but my main my main objective as as an attacker is to. I can't really do much on this side unless I take either this out and start flooding in from there. I take this out, start flooding in from there. Or if I, like, take the walls out and flood in from there. It's harder to take down this gate, these gates, because they're more well defended. So I want to do one of the, those two things, as a, those three things as, a, as an attacker from the southeast. But Dominic has opened up the northern front, and he's making it harder. He's sending in reinforcements, but now he's mixing in some swordsmen. Which, this is not too close quarters, so the swordsmen will actually start, like, defeating the spearmen. But... No has brought in his Imperial Knights, and Dominic knows that Imperial Knights will slaughter Levy units, and as well as Sergeants. So No brought his um, medium and elite infantry in to, to help save the day. So I think he's going to um, have no problem protecting this front. So no, Dominic knows that, so he's going to try to open the gate and either escape or just defend this point. Because you do still don't want to lose as many men. Here comes uh, IX Assassin, just slaughtering more units for free. I mean, let's take a look at his uh, kill death ratio once again. Now if we look at the pop, we've got uh, Emo Weber at 70. That is a very low uh, population. Obelix is at 140, No is at 166. But let's take a look. Like IX Assassin has a ridiculous kill death ratio. It's ridiculous already. He just knows how to use his units, what units to attack what. He's even attacking um, Obelix over here. I think he has his units on stand ground. This, this is not a good move. So his... I think Assassin's Micro is just superior. Now if Obelix uh, puts his men on defensive mode, splits one group up here, splits another group up here, they can actually kill this little group of 20, of like 18 infantry. But that's not what he's doing. This should fight right now. They're still holding on to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Um, trying to fend off Ix Assassin. Ix Assassin, it seems he's content with just defeating the defenders by uh, taking down their uh, their resources. And it definitely worked for Emo Weber. Emo Weber threw too many units away. His food has gone down significantly. And that's, that's the problem with newer players. Newer players have a hard time uh, adjusting as a defender just because they're not used to having to try to uh, conserve forces you don't want to throw units away for example like this knight I mean it's good that it's fighting but uh, you want to keep it alive as much as possible uh, Obelix has come in here this is could be a good move if he had uh, infantry supporting because like the archers have minimum range and so they can't fight back unfortunately there are a lot of uh, spearmen here so he's gonna lose his Super, super expensive and hard to build up uh, elite knights. That's unfortunate for him. 
at this point. You lost your knights. I would just just keep making Templar knights at this point because they their uh, their cost efficiency in in a defensive posture is uh, is really good. And I'd like these knights are good too. I mean, it's it's choosing between between the foot knights and the mounted knights. I mean, mounted knights are ridiculously strong, but you can't be throwing them away like that. Like he's only got three left. That was a lot of food lost. Uh, the, no is doing a good job just defending this area, but he needs to, like, pop out. He needs to ask Obelix, hey, Obelix, can you set the rallies outside up here? And then he can pop his, his infantry through the other side. Meanwhile, I'm starting to build up my trebuchet uh, numbers on the east side, southeast. And no is doing an amazing job repairing this uh, Bastion of al -Aqsa. He knows that if he loses this, that's a, that's a huge loss. Because now I can just easily flood in. I can choose the direction. I can choose to go inside the city over here. Or I can choose to try to take the Al-Aqsa Mosque itself. It, makes it, it just makes it really hard. You might be wondering why this isn't taking much damage from like these archers. It's because it's behind a wall. The way projectiles work in this game is whatever it hits on the way to the target will affect it. So this tower, Siege Tower, is actually hiding behind the walls. It's not being hit. Somehow, Ajax Assassin had to pull back. I'm sure he's fine with that because his resources are... Um... Let's take a look at his population. He's at 166. And his resources aren't... Oh, actually, he's pretty low, so... He just has to recuperate. Now, unfortunately, the uh, Posner of St. Ladder was taken down the, by these battering rams because there was no communication between Oblix and No to pop these units out. He would have had to like walk the long way for over here, through, from the gate to here. Uh, it is 8 p.m., so nightfall is coming. So it wasn't even a problem of... Uh, it wasn't even a problem of... Not knowing that this was happening, he just decided not to do it. He must have been more concentrated on this. I did have a bunch of archers try on this side to kill villagers. But no, it was very good at popping units in and out. Obelix is trying to keep this uh, repaired as well. So the defenders at 15 minutes left. Doing a fairly okay job. Unfortunately, their resources are low across the board except for no. So if Emo Weber was having a hard time uh, building up his forces, let's take a look at his uh, population. Emo Weber is at 112, and the other two are like near max pop. So if they were having, Emo Weber probably should have uh, asked for food because no, once again he's at 6,000. He should be uh, like donating some of that to Emo Weber, maybe even half. Um. But with a caveat that to tell Emo Weber, hey, please don't throw your units away. Because food is very hard to come by. But here I come. I'm trying to start to send like four siege rams to take this out. Because I'm tired of waiting. My time left. So you have 45 minutes in this whole game to try to uh, try to bring morale down. The defender morale down is at 63. That's just not low enough. I want to bring it down quicker. You got a lot of villagers repairing this, though. They know how important it is. But here I come, and it's nighttime. So they don't see all of these arrows coming in. Taking out their villagers. This is what Oblix sees. There's so many of villagers here, so... They really don't want this to go down. But I'm killing villagers from the south with my archers. 30 minutes left is, is not a lot of time. Also, No keeps popping out his uh, his units. So that's what he should have asked Obelix. Can I pop units out on this northern front? So I don't have problems. Meanwhile, 
it's the dead of night, and no is locked. Um, Obelix is locked in the battle to try to protect the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Ix has come back in. Let's take a look at his population. So he's he's gone back up to nearly 250. His KD is really good, and he's taking uh, down uh, the Posture of Saint Ladre, which will allow him another path to come into the game. Now here comes Emo Weber trying to send some reinforcements. Dominic, his Cataphrax went into range mode, and even though he can't see, he's uh, he's got this siege tower here that's providing a lot of vision, and his uh, general. Now this is a bug that I I've been trying to fix and I can't necessarily fix, but for some reason like certain siege equipment still retains their uh, vision. So now Dominic is coming in with his uh, group of swordsmen. He's got his Cataphract in range mode, because with Cataphracts you can switch between ranged and melee. Well, that's their power. They just don't have the extra um, bo bonus attack against infantry and extra um, anti-cavalry armor. So here I can, I, I can feel, I can taste it. I can taste uh, I can, I'm tasting, I can smell blood. I'm ready for this bastion to go down. And the way I did that was I sent a group of archers to take villagers out and start shooting from this angle. Because I cannot kill the villagers from this angle because this, this building will block. Block shots, the projectiles. Remember I talked about the wall? So I have needed to move my... Wow, that was good music timing. The dune... Music has uh, engaged. The Bastion of Alaska Mosque has gone down. And that was perfect timing for some dramatic music. So anyway, this is a big problem for the defenders because this is a double, double uh, important capture point. Like, this is called the Temple Mountain. There's two very important capture points here. And here, I keep flooding units up here. I capture this tower. And I capture, like, I kill a bunch of archers here, and now I have access to the whole city. I even send this lonely little battering ram to just take this out I didn't, without realizing that Obelix had knights here. Obelix should send his knights to fight. Do something. Raid or make flanks. They're still fighting for the Church of the Holy Sepulchre here. And it's nighttime, it's chaos. Dominic is coming in with his own heavy cavalry and infantry. He's sending reinforcements to, t to try to take out the Church of Holy Sepulchre. There's a little street blockade here. But he's not aware of it. Um, but the general can see at night, so he knows what's going on. And that's the use of a general is very good. So I've got my own general moving with my cavalry over here. Seeing what's up, what's going on. Because uh, at nighttime it's pretty chaotic. You can't see what's going on. I sent my own men to see, to test the strength. I didn't realize that there was nothing protecting this. I guess I could have. I guess I have one guy here. But I think I must have been concentrating on my cavalry over here to trying to capture the Syrian exchange. And here it is. So I took down the Syrian exchange. Oblix is fighting for his life, trying to protect the uh, Church of Holy Sepulchre. Uh, Dominic has broken down secretly, like, the Zion Gate and the Gate of Forgiveness over here. I'm still fighting in the Temple Mount, trying to get in. And I'm starting to use up my resources. Flooding it in. Because I built six trebuchets to try to take down um, defenses. I should take this tall the tower down. Why didn't I take it down? I'm trying to open up a wall here so I don't have to use siege towers. It's, it's kind of annoying me. But there's a big battle for the Church of the Holy Sepulchre here. Because you got two forces, Dominic and Ix Assassin, fighting for it. Here comes uh, Dominic with his uh, Karafraktoi shooting into Oblivion because he can't see
actually he yeah he's he can see that there's a, this, this is uh, in danger of going down now so the defenders are at 33 percent morale it doesn't look very good for them to be honest because you got these uh cataphracts just shooting very very fun unit because they can switch between range and melee in the meantime uh this front is sort of stabilizing for the defenders Emo Weber, not sure he can make it. Let's look at the resources. No. I mean, just imagine if No gave some resources. That would have been even more food gained for him. That's 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 unfortunate. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre has fallen. The defenders are... Oh. What happened? Oh. So green was raided. And this is what Oblix needed to do. I don't even know how he got in here. But he's taking out this uh, Supply Depot. Elite Tent, Command Tent, and Supply Depot. This is a clutch move by Oblix. And now it's Dawn. So the Chaos, it's Dawn. And now everyone can see and take stock of what the situation is. But Oblix has gained his team some extra time. Now he just has to... <laughs> he needs to get out of this. Let's see if he can... His, 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 his horses are trapped. Literally trapped. Oh, can he escape? Can he escape? Yes. Okay, well, if he can gain more morale, I don't know. I don't know how the, the defenders are going to gain morale back. But that was a clutch move by Oblix. Because now, even though the, uh, the defenders have lost this, I think it's cancelled out by the fact that... Actually, it's not good. Yeah. The uh, the attackers are losing morale until Ix Assassin rebuilds his command command tent. So very good move by Obelix. And now you see what I talk about the the supply wagon respawns all the way in the southeast. There's a lot there's a lot going on. I I, I capture this Southern Zion Gate because I I don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. So I'm trying to capture more points. Try to bring defender morale back down. Red's general is killed. That takes out another 5% morale. So that's another thing about keeping your general alive. Is is that... Uh, it uh, lowers morale by 5%. So you want to keep your general alive. And here, I'm starting to plug units in. These... With uh, some Varangos mixed in with uh, my... My regular guys. Emo Weber worried about the time. It's because one minute is a, a real life minute, you know? But they're losing morale left and right. I don't know if there's anything else the defenders can do because we keep capturing points. Look at all these points that uh, Dominic is capturing. Postern of the Tanners was captured by us. Like, we are just capturing points left and right. The Syrian exchange is under attack. I, I don't know. There's not a lot of resources left. I think the that was just one mistake that no... The big one is not uh, giving Weber... Uh, and that was it. That's it. The big mistake is uh, no didn't give Weber... Um, emo Weber... Food earlier on. Because he was sitting on 6,000 and not using it. You can't be doing that. You have to like... Keep under... I would The safe number to be... Uh, not wasting food is under 5,500. If you're sitting at 6,000 food, that means you're at the at the maximum food and you're not buying any more food. I mean, you're not using up any more food. And so you could be gaining food, but you're not. And so that's a waste. So that's just like a, a game mechanic that forces you to try to, to keep making units and forcing you to tr keep trying to either help your allies or... Or just send your units to fight. One of those things, you know? Uh, I mean, four minutes is... is That's pretty close, guys. Four minutes is like... If Emo Weber had a little more... A few more men. Like, Noah's at 109. Imagine if the food was distributed and... Obelix and Emo Weber had more, more men... Oh, look at this. They actually... 
they must have been um, concentrating because they they weren't um, constantly producing. It's really hard though. But yeah, attacking on two fronts, very strong strategy. Risky as the attackers because you could uh, be destroyed. But if you are established, it pays off. It really pays off. It, it, it's really hard to, to deal with as a defender. But even with the with the mistakes the defender has made, it's four minutes left. So if you could just imagine if they held on just for a little longer, did just a few more moves. Obelix did a really good job saving his team temporarily by uh, taking out Elite Tent and Command Tent and gaining that morale back. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what else he could have done because like our bases were so secure. Because the Romans are unique in where they build fortified palisade walls and they can build watchtowers. I mean, it does take up stone, 100 stone. But like it secures your base so well. It makes it so hard to attack. Because these are armor-piercing crossbow belts. So yeah, the... Just imagine the defenders killed IX Assassin. They, I, this would be a completely different game. But good job. Very close match. Very fun to watch. Very chaotic. I, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure that there's a lot of like unique, interesting moments that I missed because the action was just so chaotic and, and absolutely all over the city. Dominic did a good job showcasing the power of the cataphracts. Uh, because historically, they actually had like a segment of uh, cataphract archers who would uh, pepper and shower the enemy with arrows before coming in and like smashing into their ranks. And they're like, they're slower. They're like the slowest cavalry in the game together with uh, camel archers because they actually did just kind of like trot towards their enemy. They didn't gallop. And so that's that's a historical um, reference for that. Well, let's take a look at the uh, stats. That's a ridiculous. Ridiculous stats. That's amazing. So IX Assassin had 1,146 kills. No was the hero of his side with his use of elite. Foot Knights, very good. Obelix uh, did what I he did. Uh, not too good this time because Emo Weber and Obelix need a better micro to face IX Assassin. This was this is a result of uh, knowing what unit counters what and good micro and decision making. Like he pulled back, he didn't throw his men away. Like Emo Weber would throw like he threw a bunch of men away it's because he's a new player and so like for a new player emo weber did fairly well did pretty well especially it's very shocking if this is your first game so uh he did pretty well unfortunately he didn't know about um how the defenders have uh, a lower rate of income for food and gold than the, the attackers so it's way more important to not throw your units away as a defender compared to the attackers. And the assassin knew how to do just that. He pulled back when he needed to. He attacked when he needed to. Dominic opened the fronts up. It was effectively three fronts, which is so hard to deal with, especially with these smaller points being captured again and again. Like this is where two, two morale points, two morale points, three morale points, five morale points, three morale points, five morale points, you know? Just little things add up. You can see that if they just... Yeah, they could have held on. I, I do believe. If Emo Weber uh, knew how to control his, his units, could be a completely different game. Anyway, that was really fun. Hope you... Hope to see you in the next video.